All right, this is the last concept in Unit 12. We're going to be identifying what we call conjugate acid-base pairs. All right, this is when um, you have compounds that differ by the presence of one proton. Remember, a proton is a positive hydrogen ion. All acids have a conjugate base. Um, this is formed when their proton has been donated or it's going to look like it's been lost or given away. Um, all bases have a conjugate acid. And this is formed when they have accepted a proton or gained a proton. Now, HX and X are called conjugate acid-base pairs. So again, they differ by a single proton. H2O and H3O+, plus, or hydronium, is also a conjugate pair, and they differ by the presence of a proton. So you can see here the ones in blue would be a conjugate acid-base pair, and the ones in red are another conjugate acid-base pair. Um, in the reverse reaction, the conjugate acid is actually going to then donate a proton. That's why it's referred to as an acid, and that reforms the original base. The conjugate base is going to accept a proton and reform the acid. Just keep in mind the titles of acid and base do apply when we look at the reverse reaction. So let's identify the acid, base, and conjugate acid and base in this example. So we're going to first identify the acid and base. So again, this is going back to our previous concept. Um, this hydrogen here in our acid is going to get donated to the NH3 or ammonia. Um, this is going to produce what we have as our products. Now, I would say look for which ones are most similar. So by doing that, we're going to see that our base is most similar to NH4. So we look for it being the opposite. If this is our base, this has to be our conjugate acid. If HCO3 is our acid, its pair is going to be its conjugate base. All right, and then just something quickly to kind of keep in mind for what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, we can write the conjugate base. If we look at acetic acid, um, its conjugate base would be one less proton, so C2H3O2. If we have H2PO4, its conjugate base, again, we're taking away that hydrogen to form its conjugate base would be HPO4 negative 2. And just keep in mind, um, it's become negative 2 because we're giving away a positive hydrogen. All right, and looking at the opposite, if we want to look at the conjugate acid, we have our OH with a negative one charge forming H2O, so we've added in a proton, and then we have Br with a negative one that's now becoming HBr by, again, adding in a proton to write the conjugate acid. All right, um, and lastly, remember the strength of an acid or base depends on how readily or easily it accepts or donates a proton. Um, if we have a strong acid, this means it has a weak conjugate base, or if we were to have a, say, weak base, it would have a strong conjugate acid, and so on. All right, so that's it for that concept. We're going to do a lot of practicing um, with it so that you get comfortable assigning conjugate acid-base pairs.